All right. We are now joined by former UFC Bantamweight champion and current number nine ranked contender, Cody Garbrandt. Cody, thank you for the time today, sir. I appreciate it. Glad to be here. We will take the first question from Roman Madrowski with ESPN. Right. Sorry about that. Hey, Cody, um, I want to get your thoughts on the other Bantamweight bout between Aljamain and Cody. And if you have a prediction, I'd love to hear it. Uh, yeah, I really... I really don't care about the other band and weights, you know, just focus on my fight, you know, man, best man winning those fights and uh, look forward to, uh, you know, future matchups with them in, in the future and, and see how this uh, band weight division uh, unfolds after this weekend and uh, going from there. Cool. Thank you. We will take the next question from Caroline Pierce with BT Sport. Cody, Caroline Pierce here. It's been a while. Love the beard. How are you doing? Uh, doing great. Yeah, the quarantine beard. <laughs> I like it a lot. Look, it's been a tough time for you. The time off, the injuries, hospitalization that you talked about, as well as obviously the losses. Talk to us about what's been the biggest challenge for you during this time. Um, you know, I think that, you know, life has thrown a lot of challenges, you know, inside a career, outside of the career, life itself. Uh, for me, it wasn't a really a challenge. It was just uh, about staying motivated, staying driven, you know, knowing that um, life is a marathon, not a sprint, you know, just constantly reminding myself, you know, you go through these hardships in your life, these, these um, you know, hard roads you have to battle up. But I knew that, you know, losing the title was going to be um, a hard thing to do, but to regain it was even going to be harder. So I had to just basically, you know, physically, mentally build, build myself up for uh, what I was able to do, you know, what was it would need to be done to reclaim that title. And I feel like I've battled my demons. I've corrected a lot of my, you know, errors, mistakes, things that I needed to do. Um, you know, got out of my comfort zone, went to New Jersey, you know, spent a time away from, you know, my comfort zone and uh, my family, my, you know, everything that I've known. So I went, you know, coast to coast. And, uh, you know, I think this is going to be a huge, um, a huge, you know, payoff uh, coming Saturday night. Well, talk to us about that moving, well, not moving, but splitting your time between Team Alpha Mel, Mark Henry, Ricardo Almeida. What have they added to your arsenal? You know, what, where do you feel that you've grown in that time with that additional work and that change of scenery that you've had? I feel like they, you know, my coaches from Team Alpha Mel, my coach from New Jersey, uh, Ricardo Almeida, um, you know, Coach Henry, they've added a lot, you know, just with the coaches of Team Alpha Mel, they've all blended everything together and just, you know, always constantly, um, each camp has been just reminding me to be myself. You know, do what I am best at is, you know, be a fighter, be an athlete. And, um, you know, just, just remind myself of, to have fun, you know, to fall in love again with the sport, uh, to have that passion, that fire. And I think that's a difference uh, from this fight camp um, to the last fight camps going in, leading up to the fight that I'm, I'm hungry again. I'm, uh, my passion burns everything that's ever have. And uh, just just very thankful that that, that fire is back. You know, it's... Uh, it sucks to lose it. You know, I, I love fighting so much that I hated it at times. And every time that I tried to walk away from fighting, I felt like I was always drawn back. And you know, this is my true purpose in life is to be a fighter and use these God-given skills that I was blessed with to provide for my family, to make a better life for myself, to, you know, become the best in the world. And, uh, you know, just, just putting the hard work in and the, and the daily grind is uh, going to be a huge payoff uh, come Saturday. Really can't wait to see that. You must have confidence. You know what you can do with your hands. It sounds like obviously you've been working on the ground game even more as well. Um, sometimes in the past, there's been a tendency that your emotions can both show us great showmanship in the octagon, but also, you know, have got the better of you a little bit. You talked about the psychological work that you've done as well. What does that look like? And, and is the plan, again, Asen Sao, who's not an emotional guy in himself, he's not going to really rile you up. Is the plan to sort of taper that a little bit? Um, you know, I have a nice game plan, you know, just, be myself in there, you know, just be myself and have fun, you know, you know mix things up, become the martial artist I know that I am, that I know I've been working on. Um, so just about having fun, man, I'm excited. I mean, this whole week, even getting here, it's just felt great to be here to fight week, you know, getting the Reebok here, the smallest things, checking in, getting picked up from the airport, like the small things you take for granted, I think um, you lose sight of those sometimes. Um, just excited to go through this journey of fight week and have those feels again, you know, get goosebumps thinking about it, you know, your heart races when you think about the fight. And I think that's a difference, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, I'm invested in this, um, in this sport again, you know, if you want to call fighting a sport, but I'm, uh, I'm all in, you know, 
felt like after I won the title, I, I didn't set goals after. Obviously, I had injuries. I was more worried about staying healthy and getting healthy. So I didn't, I wasn't able to visualize um, what my next plans were, what my next goals were. And that's what I've done my whole entire life was visualization, you know, manifest my, my future. And all I could really focus on was staying healthy, getting healthy, rehabbing through my injuries. And now I was able to have that time to really reflect and just train and get back to the grind, you know. Hard work pays off, you know, that's, that's as simple as that, hard work pays off. And all, all of this will obviously be targeted towards half hour sand. So what challenge does he bring to the table, to the cage, if you like? I mean, I have, I have a lot of respect for Asun Sal. He's been, you know, there's not many WC guys left around, and he's one of those guys in spot, and, you know, been in the top five, you know, for quite some time now. Um, you know, he he doesn't bring the most exciting fights. You know, he's kind of more of a counter striker. So, you know, just for me, it's just, you know, my game plan is just to stay busy, do more than him, and, uh, you know, push the pace on him and, and make him fight. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing this this new revived and energized version of you in there. So best of luck. Thanks, Carolyn. And we will take our next questions from Nolan King with USA Today. Appreciate the time today, man. Uh, just kind of going off of, uh, you know, what was just asked of you. you. You talked about the mental side of things and the physical adjustments. When you go back and you look at the three losses that you had and, and the changes that you've made, what do you think the biggest adjustment you've had to make coming into this fight is? The hard work, hard work, work in, you know, believed in it, just didn't go in and, you know, clock in. I went in for a purpose to get better each day, to push myself to the limit. I always train hard, I always do that, but, uh, you know, really investing in myself, becoming a better martial artist. I mean, I traveled 3,000 miles across the country, left my family, left the comforts of my home, left the, my comfort zone to get out of it. And that's what I really need. I had new, new guys, you know, that are hungry to, you know, to, to challenge me, to, to be battle tested, come back to Sacramento in between camps. Um, and the same guys, you know, are, are still battle testing me. And, you know, so just getting ready for war, you know, getting ready for that battle and just putting yourself in those, um, those tough situations, getting out of your comfort zone and just putting the work in. That's, uh, that's really what's different, you know, um, no excuses, no, no injuries, um, no mental setbacks, you know, no emotional setbacks, just really trying to find peace in my life. You know, my family brings that to me and knowing when I was away from them, what I was sacrificing, um, what I was missing out on, you know, um, just are going to contribute to my success on Saturday night. And you've talked in the past about uh, potentially moving down to flyweight. Is that still on your plate after this one? Uh, we'll see, man. We'll see how the bandweight shakes up. You know, I want to be the best in the world. And that's what I set out to do. You know, if, if it's in my cards to go down to 25 and become the flyweight champion as well as the bandweight champion, then uh, we'll do that. I'll talk to my coaches and, and managers. But, you know, first and foremost, I have a you know tough adversary in Rafael Sunsal this Saturday that I'm focused on, um, you know, but you always try to have your second move ready to go. But, uh, you know, it, it's getting it's getting back to the throne. That's what that's what I want. I want the, the bandweight title uh, back. You know, I'm uh, very excited for that um, opportunity to to climb the ranks again, you know, once a hunter, always a hunter. What do you think the, uh, the game, like the, the, the map to that title shot is, you feel like with just a couple more wins here, given your name, given that you're a former champion, you could be right back in that mix. You could be the one fighting for the title. Just go out there and be myself, you know, go out there and fight the way that I fight, you know, put on performances, you know, starts people, you know, first, second, third, fourth, whatever round I have to do it. And, you know, just cool, calm and collected, um, just really show my growth, you know, I, I look at it as like a lot of people look at a loss and failure or setback as, you know, not no progress, you know, or no, but for me, it was like, I've learned, I've had to learn the hard way my whole entire life. And I feel like I won the title at 25, you know, I was 25 years old, 11 0 world champion. I, I lost it early and I feel like I'm still, you know, I made my prime at 28 years old. Um, I feel Every day I'm getting better as a martial artist, um, as a human, as a, as a man. Um, so I, I just feel like my, better, my best days are ahead of me. And uh, just knowing that life's a marathon, not a sprint. You know? So whatever it takes to get back to that um, title shot to become a world champion, I'm mentally, physically, emotionally prepared um, to do whatever it needs to be done. Good luck Saturday, Cody. Appreciate the time, man.
And we will take our next set of questions from Mike Heck with MMA Fighting. Hey, Cody, as you know, in the sport, especially hindsight is a, is a fickle beast. And you got, you sort of alluded to, you got pushed pretty quickly, became a champion in just four years as a pro after just 11 fights. If you could do things differently and get yourself out of your comfort zone, like you talked about and learn these lessons a little earlier on, would you do it? Or is this an important part of your story and your journey? Yeah, this is, I would never change anything in my life. I feel like, uh, Whatever stage you're in, or whatever you're going through, you're going to grow through. I actually believe that the Lord puts you in places in your life for learning experiences, setbacks, success. Like, are you prepared for the success that's going to come with the win? Are you prepared what's going to have to be done with a loss? You know, and I've, I've you know, battled my demons. I've, I've faced myself. i faced my, you know, insecurities, my, my you know, my you know, setbacks and, and really study those and really like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's on me to turn this around. It's on any coach, any teammate, it's on myself. And uh, just being real with yourself and true with yourself and what needs to be done. And that's just putting the hard work in, you know, grinding completely in, in, in every facet of every martial arts um, discipline you need to do. You need to work on this, you need to work on that. And just becoming a better martial artist is uh what has really changed my eyes, you know, going to Jersey has really been a, a blessing for me. Um, I'm, I, I hate change. Change in my life is, um, I always was like, you know, my mom would, I come home from school, my mom would move the furniture around and I would literally get physically sick because I, I, it would change. So sometimes, you know, I think that we look at change as a negative, um, negative reflection in our life, but uh, some change is good. This has been a good change, you know, a little bit of insanity. If you can go in there and do the same Know, kind of game plan or same um, approach to the fighting like I have. You know, that's, that's insane. It's being insane. So um, just, you know, really just soul searching, man, just, just talking with myself. You know, you know, it's me versus me always. It's never my adversary or my opponent that's in front of me. It's always, if I can battle myself, I can, you know, defeat myself, then I, I, I'm going to go and be victorious against any opponent because whatever I do, I'm the harshest critic of myself and, um, you know, on the corrections and just being real with myself, you know, no excuses, no nothing. Just, I wouldn't change anything, man. Like, you know, I don't see anyone else that was uh, brought up, you know, not too many people was brought up like I was, especially in the fight game. I fought everybody. I fought the top contenders, the undefeated knockout artists, you know, Eight nose, the twenty-one nose. I made us starts them. Everybody they put in front of me, knocked them out. You know, couldn't beat Dominic Cruz. Um, you know, master class performance against them. And you know, for me, once I obtained that goal, like I said, of being a world champion, I I dreamed about it since I was a teenager. I obtained that goal. I got injured shortly after. I couldn't manifest or visualize myself inside the octagon or defending the title because I was so focused on staying healthy. I had a huge back injury and I tore my back at an annual tear and went to Germany. I did stem cells. I did everything I could besides going under the knife to get surgery. And then that took a long time to rehab and re rebuild. And, you know, any sport, any athlete knows it's, you know, the physicality of it is, is intense, but the emotional, uh, mental side of it is like, hey, can I push this without it doing it again? So kind of was like held back a little bit in my training, so I wasn't super prepared, but I just got back to that, like, you know, that physical grind, you know what I mean? <laughs> the physical grind, I mean, I ended up landing myself in the hospital for a week because I had, a, you know, a kidney infection. I was training too hard. Um, but, you know, I got out of the hospital and was right back to work. And, you know, it's, that's it, man. You're going to have to go through those things. You're going to be faced with so many different things in this sport, ups and downs, highs and lows. And I feel like life goes in the same way. You just got to find that balance of life and fighting a career and, and balance it all. And I feel like I've done a great, great job um, as of lately, the last year, I would say, to really balance the, the father, the husband, the, the fight, fighting, being able to turn it on and off um, the switch when, you know, it's, it's go time to where I'm, I'm in focus fully in camp and just really, uh, you know, working through everything that, you know, life throws at me. Has this all provided some valuable lessons for you to pass on to your son as well, to know that sometimes life's going to throw you some curveballs, but it's how you react to them, how you bounce back from them and move forward that defines who you are as a person? Yeah, definitely. You know, I have eyes on me. My son looks up to me. He watches everything, I, every single thing I do. I'll shadow box in the house and I'll, you know, I'll see Kai shadow box and they're all, you know, just doing this. Me and my wife trip out all the time because he just listens to us. He just absorbs everything that we do and say and how we act. So, 
want to be a good example for him. You know what I mean? Like completely be like someone I want him to be proud to be like, Cody's my father. You know what I mean? That's, that's my father. You know what I mean? That's, that's something that at the end of the day, whether how many, how many titles I have or defend or how many fights I win from here on out, he knows that I, I, I give it my all. I never gave up. When the going got tough, I never, I never took a knee. You know what I mean? I, I might, I might have bent a little bit, but I never broke. You know, I got up. No matter how I got knocked down, keep getting up and fighting, fighting for a better life for him. Just to show him, like sometimes life doesn't go as as you plan. You gotta, you know, go, rule with the punches and keep going. So that's for everybody. That's for everybody in life. I hope we, like, I can inspire a lot of people to like not give up if they're you know, going through hard times or you know. What I mean, I was on top of the world. I mean, I was a world champion, young. Had everything at the world at my fingertips, you know, and I'm on a three fight skid, but that never, you know, deterred me from what I what I feel like I am. I'm the best man away in the world, and I get to showcase that um, again June 6th with the refound love uh, of the sport, passion, fire burning. Just this one's for my soul. This is what I need, you know. As much as I try to have that hatred for fighting, I'm always pulled back into it because I need fighting more than fighting needs me. And at the end of the day, that's my purpose. And this is how I'm going to um, hopefully help a lot of people get inspired and motivated. And, and my son is looking at me, watching my every move to just remember that everything happens for a reason. No matter where you're at in life, you got to just keep, you know, put your head down or head up and, and keep uh, chugging along. So the hunger is clearly there. The desire to compete is certainly there. But I've talked to you a few times over the years. I have to say, outside of the quarantine beard there, you are about as relaxed as I've ever seen you heading into a fight. Is this the most relaxed you've been? Yeah, I get goosebumps thinking about it, man. Like, I don't know. I just, I think that I've done everything in my power. I left no, uh, no um, stone unturned this camp, you know. I literally have been training so hard, you know. Right after Christmas, I went to New Jersey. Trained for Jersey and obviously had a kidney infection. Right after I got out of the hospital, I went and searched for the best kidney specialist to make sure my kidneys were okay. And, um, you know, just got back to work, you know, I just, I didn't want to let it all go to waste, you know, no matter what I was going through, just grinding through all the bullshit, you know, there's a lot of bullshit that life throws at you, and you just got to grind through that stuff, and um, as simple as, as that, I know I said it in the, the past interview or the past question, is like, hard work pays off, you just always got to remember, hard work will always pay off, you can be the most talented, the most gifted, the most, the fastest, the strongest, Whatever. If you're not working hard, you're not gonna you're not gonna get the results you want. And that's all you have to do is just grind. Nobody cares about your excuses, nobody cares about what happened yesterday, today, you know, what you have going on next week. It's about what's going on. Or did you put in enough work for this camp? Did you put in enough time to go in there? If Rafael's gonna give me my best pace, he's gonna be able to withstand everything that I am. Am I able to do enough in him to win this fight? And I just know that I've done that. I know that I can go in there and put him in deep waters and drown his ass. I appreciate all the candor, Cody. Uh, all the best to you on Saturday. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for the time, Cody. That is all we have for you. You are good to go, sir. All right. That was the easiest one I've done. Immediate <laughs>